Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Uh, help me appreciate the uh, I want to also appreciate uh, I think this um, I didn't get the name. Thank you so much. And also, um, I just can't remember many of the names he called. Thank you so much for um, having us around. Also, I really appreciate my friend and my brother. So much brother. The, the set amount of life and issues. And those that may appreciate yourselves. I really say that uh, ministry and business and life basically is about people. I believe if you are the only one living upon the face of the earth, you will be tired. The reason why we do the things we do is because there is a people willing to hear. There are people you will partner with in business, there are people you will partner with in uh, the ministry and everything you do, people are very important. Somehow, um, you must be able to walk with each other no matter what. Also, let me appreciate my assistant. He's not my assistant. Hallelujah. He's going to feel the impact of what it means to be an assistant. Well, you can go a little bit about what it doesn't, yes. But you can also maybe go with the design. You don't really have to be too close to be so that you can describe him. Um, let me appreciate my friend on the keyboard. But you have to always be playing that. You have to always be playing. I don't know so much about uh, piano, but I know strings. And I think I like it. <laughs> I just like the sound. Uh, because of the want of time, we are going to be brief this time. Also, let me appreciate that was Joshua. Or theater. The man of prayer. You know, these days, you just only know some of us that pray. There are people that pray, you don't know that. I have met a lot of people that pray, and I have to give them a salutation. So, this like that in the body of Christ, much more time, people that are on display may not actually be the strongest. And that may be actually be the one that have the stature of the spirit. Sometimes they are just the one that God have found them that privilege by grace. I always say influence is not tantamount to spiritual authority. Neither is it equal to stature of the spirit. These are the things that God gives as he desires. Another man may be everywhere yet he doesn't have substance. Another may be nowhere yet he has substance. You study all two scriptures, you will discover that their emphasis was more on God than it was on people. I know I let you understand that people are very important. As good as people are important, their importance is in how much more they align to their dealings and the patterns of God. People become a disadvantage when they walk in disalignment. That's why a lot of times God does not work with number. He looked for one man that can be aligned enough for him to work with. It's very hard for you to see God work with a number. When you study all through scripture, God never work with a number. He work with a man. The simple reason is because it's very hard to bring corporate people to what we call corporate alignment. But it's very easy for you to compare a man to bring him to submit to the dictates of God. And God knows that if you can get one man, you can get a thousand. So many more times, the Bible always refers to that God is seeking for a man that he can use, not a people. Because people will always be a challenge. In fact, the more people increase, the more disobedience increase. Sometimes it's very hard to get everybody to be in the Bible. That is why a number is needed enough. As powerful as Jesus Christ was, he could have decided to choose more than 12 apostles. He did it. 
And we submit people that believe in him that follow him. The same way as it works in the body of Christ today. Don't be deceived, followers and followers. I told somebody, I said, don't clap for yourself that people are following you. The same way they follow you, they will leave you. <laughs> in the days of trials, I'm men tested. In the days of lack and abundance, I'm men tested. Sometimes I always see the season of abundance preparing for the season of lack. And the season of lack preparing for the season of abundance. You will know true friends in the days of lack, fake ones in the days of abundance. And God knows you can't deceive me. All you are loving and shouting and crying and use me is just looking at you. Are you truly willing to give up anything for the cause? Not the cause. And until you are, you can never deceive God. The one day I sat down to give to the flesh in my life and I realized that a man cannot mock God. He can never, never scam God. God knows your today, tomorrow, next tomorrow, many years to come. So even the intention of you trying to use God, he knew it. I get what I'm saying now. So that's the reason why many people remain on the back side. He kept them back because he knew their intentions are wrong. So even before you begin the journey, you have already planned and you are already programmed to fail by God. God is the one assisting you. Because God knows that you can never prosper you because you don't have the agenda of the kingdom at all. So no matter how much you cry in church, how much you do, God use me. When God evaluates your life, 10 years, you realize that you don't have him in the next 10 years plan. That's like a company where they employ you ask you, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? If you don't mention them, there's every chance and possibility you will not be employed. The same way that are people that are in relationship or married today that are not trying to be with each other for the next 10 years. And yet they are deceiving themselves. It's the same way. So you must understand that this is a very, very long journey. Very, very long journey. You are not willing to continue until the end. You are as well wasting your time. You will deceive God. What you are saying today will determine what will become tomorrow. Every man you see today is a product of a lot of his sacrifice that men have never had and seen. Tell God that today I will not be like an umpire. Or shall you lead to what the Lord will have to do with you? I always say Lagos is a part I ground. There is no city that is hard. No city. I will say unto us, the child is born to us, a son is given. Every city needs a son to be given. When the son is given, the city will end. There are many children of God. So many of them. <laughs> but there are few sons. Among the few sons, there are few that are chosen and they are given. So this is the type of upon whom I am well pleased. Now, hear ye. One of the greatest challenges in the body of Christ is to come to a point where the Lord can command the nation to hear you. When the Lord has done that, men may not like you, but they don't have an option. Have you been in a place, in a point where you need to actually ask your enemy for help? It's a terrible place to be. That's how life works. God brings you to a point where He commands the world to hear you. At that time, it is too late. The world is too deep. Anybody can become great, money is business. Anybody. I'm telling you, anybody. There are too many billionaires, too many billionaires, and all of them are not selling the same thing. The same way, God does not need anybody at home to work with you. If only you can give him time. But I'm trying to you understand that this journey, as much as it is, a corporate journey is a personal journey. As much as this is a personal and corporate journey, it is a personal journey. And until you look at it as such, you may remain for long and never make it back.
How we want the Lord intend for us to do is not for us to be at the same age. But for each and every one of us to come to full functionality and be activated to become a living episode. I will be the proclamation of Jesus Christ. As he spoke in the book of Acts chapter 1, 8, when he said, And ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witness. Christianity was actually a resultant effect of that proclamation. Men and women few in their number receive power. And now, by the utilization of the Holy Spirit, give in that power, and they became living witnesses. Why they became living witnesses, their lifestyle was the definition of what God Christianity. And here we are today. We embrace Christianity as a name when they connected the thing that made Christianity became Christianity. The prime thought and the focus of Christianity is to bring believers to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Then they see power and then they can become living witnesses. It is impossible for a man to witness unto the Lord without these two tools. I know a realm of power without the Holy Ghost. It is possible for a man to witness with power and he may not know the Holy Spirit. But if he must witness according to God's standard, the Holy Ghost will be in you first. Then power will come. Any man that you see today function in power without the testimony of the Holy Spirit is a challenge. You are not supposed to happen in Christianity. You are supposed to join in the Holy Ghost to come to power, then you can witness. Lagos will never hear you. Or show you will never change until you understand who the Holy Spirit is. Utilize it, then grew in power. And the challenge is this, many of us cannot be able to contain the Holy Spirit. We need our God. We can't host God. We can't carry God. We can't utilize God. We cannot take advantage of the Holy Spirit. Pastors run churches as usual. And after five years, after ten years, men pass it on those God. And you wonder why they are tired. They should be tired. I don't know about you, but I have been a church guy for so long. My life has never changed. Until the day I begin to encounter the Lord. That was one and now realized. That a believer is anybody that believes anything. Anyone that believes anything is a believer. I refuse to be a believer. Muslims call themselves faithful believers. Hindus call themselves believers. I know worshippers are believers. Anyone that believes in anything is a believer. If you believe this archetype is your God, you are a believer. As good as it is for you to be a believer, it is not qualified for you to do anything in the kingdom. You are a believer because you believe in the God. There are so many gods out there. You can believe in one. That makes you a believer. You can be willing to die for the God. And that makes Christians don't even know God. So you don't be willing to die for the God. You are not qualified to be a believer. You are a natural man. The belief system introduced another dimension to a man and give him a designation. You can believe in science. You are a believer. You can believe in anything good that he do. You are a believer. I don't worship him. He's believing. I always say an idol is a worthless doctrine. It has no power to do good or evil. But any power it has is the power you ascribe to it. Anytime a man believes something, power is energized to work on. All things are possible to them that believe. When that proclamation was made, it was not come to listen. Anything you believe by the system of creation, it will work for you. Somebody asked me why do people that are not born again yet still become something? I said because they believe anything they believe. You do you believe anything? You are not making blood, you are not in society, you are not serving your body. You don't be, you are not a Muslim, yet you want to prosper. You must believe something, my friend. 
The best requirement in life is to believe something. As good as that is, is is not sufficient enough in proof for you to the present God. You are a believer because you believe God. You become a Christian because you now believe in Christ. A Christian is one that believes in Christ. For I have begun to relate with Jesus Christ. Yet the new God, they know the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. But a personality came again that had the ability to express God. When that personality came, the system was changed. They have to believe in Jesus. And because of their believing in Jesus, what they had was a privilege to be called Christians because they saw them act like the Christ. As good as that work, it was a testimony and a testament that was attested and approved by idol worshippers. When they went to Antioch and did many signs and wonders, when men saw them, some called them Jews, some called them heavens. They went to another land, they did many things, they said, no, this must be the God of our land that descended in water flesh. Others saw them the heart about the Christ, and they said, these ones are Christians, because they have been with Jesus. But as good as that is, being Christian was not good enough. They have to come to a point where they have to believe in the personality of the Holy Spirit. Until they get to that point, when the Holy Ghost come upon them and they begin to utilize it, they could never be called witness. Witness are not just men that believe in God. Witness are not just men that believe in the Christ. Witness are men that know the Holy Ghost and know his power of operation. Any man that does not know the Holy Spirit and how you operate, he can never be a witness. He can be a believer, he can be a Christian, but yet he doesn't know the substance of what we call reality. Jesus Christ was the one that was speaking, he said, except I go, he will not come. And it is expedient. And I go. My going will grant him ascendancy and traffic upon the face of the earth to be able to tabernacle with the heart of men. Because he knew that he was what he is because of the weakness of the spirit. If the spirit himself was not come upon from on high upon Jesus Christ, he would have never become who he is. What makes you think you can become anything without the spirit? We saw all through the life of Jesus Christ how good he was, how energetic he was, and how charismatic he was. How righteous he was, you may never even meet anywhere that Jesus Christ left you woman. Do you know what? It's possible to achieve righteousness in the flesh. As powerful as that is, it does not have the substance of reality. And that is why all through the days of his living, it was a waste of time he was living until the Holy Ghost came. Immediately when the Holy Spirit came upon him, we saw that from that very moment, science and wonders was a normal reality. What were we of those things before? It was a promise he hidden in heaven. The same one of life will look in peace until you begin to utilize the Holy Spirit. Being busy is not an excuse. So you have to tell them to go and party. Party! Party in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from a heart. The simple reason is because it's not good enough to be a believer, it's not good enough to be a Christian. Jesus Christ was with them, he mentored them, he fathered them. But immediately after he left the past life, all of them went back to fish. I want you to know that no matter how good your mentor is, no matter how powerful your church is in the past life, if you don't know the Holy Spirit. It's just a matter of time. One day, they began to ask themselves, this man said he will rise, he didn't rise. It was just only three days. They were not patient enough to wait for God for three days. They were having experience and encounter with him every day. Yes! What he was doing with them was he was witnessing God to them. 
A man came as a living witness, revealing God to them. So they were satisfied. But a two days, three days absence of all, their life became compromised. The task collector went back to task collecting. The fisherman went back to fishing as though they never see Jesus. Mind you, how many years they have been with him? They slept with him, eat with him for more than three years. It is possible for you to have encounters with God every day and live past like one day. The challenge is simply because you have not learned how to utilize the Holy Spirit. It went so bad that upon all the exploits he did in the land, the time came. Men and women begin to talk about him in the land and begin to call him a scum. I will speak about some few men that we are going to on their way into their mouth. And they begin to speak about the first prophet that he has turned the name of the first prophet. One who has came and spoke with a lot of things and he gave them a promise. That he will rise again after three days. But these men, they are unbelieving believers that cannot be patient enough for just three days. Why he yet speak unto them? The Bible says he witnessed again. Immediately when he broke the bread again, their eyes were open. And they began to repent. The same way that it will always be to you like that if you refuse to continue with life God. You see yourself rise and fall again and again and you feel so bad any time the Lord appears to you again. The goal is to come to a point where you sustain a continual relationship with God. Then the entire street of Oshun will know that the living witness is around. The reason why they see you and tell you are not different from other pastors is because truly you are not different. They are not seeing something that will make you look different. You speak their language. You insult like them. You fight like them. You dread in the party hall like them. How will you become a witness? You have betrayed everything that looks like God. Your life lacks consecration. Your life lacks pressure. Your life lacks prayers because it is not evident. If you are truly a man that God the Lord, the Lord will betray you one day. If you are a man of prayer, one day you will be in the office. <laughs> Sorry, you. I didn't know how you have it. You may be in the box and suddenly you blast in tongues. When you are planning to see the money, you say, no, oh, Christian, don't do this. You see, you will have to understand that if your life cannot be the gospel, your sermon is a waste of time. Evangelism is not done by trust. They don't need those trusts. While I was a Canada guy, I spoke with trust. If I can tell the Bible, I spoke with what is trust. Rubbish. If your lifestyle cannot actually tell someone about the Christ, forget about the trust. It's a waste of time. Men read our lifestyle. And the only person they can read is a man that is a living with. A man that knows God. Know the Christ and know the Holy Ghost and you utilize the Holy Spirit. It is possible for you to have the Holy Ghost and yet you grieve it. It's possible for you to have the Holy Spirit and yet to quench. It's possible for you to have the Holy Spirit and yet to blaspheme. It's possible. The testimony of Christianity is the testimony about the movement of living witnesses. How men and women stood with the Lord and yet now become them. The goal of God is to bring us to that point of oneness. As you become one with Him, you, know, you can now witness. One of the only ways that can be possible is when you understand the advantage of the Spirit. I need you to understand that every land you go to, there are millions of ministers, if not thousands. But there are two witnesses. Every city you go to, every land you go to, every country you go to, there are men and women that have been approved or to sit up on the throne of witness. These men, their voice can never be shut down. Why Elijah came and made a declaration there are many prophets in Israel. But as strong as they are, their starting point is not sufficient enough for you for them to utter his degree. In the same way that in every land there may be thousands of men, here there will be a man that is a witness enough 
that God can do nothing except He comes the man. See how can I hide this from my friend Abraham? When a man becomes a living witness, he's free from becoming a son of God to a friend of God. Yet you sustain the dimension of the Son of God, but now you are like a friend to God. So let us reason together. This is what I want to do. It's not everything that a son may do, but there are almost everything a friend do. Now you are one with the friend. Many of you may never trust your children, but you can trust your, your friend. Why? Friendship is participation. Friendship is intimacy. Friendship is sharing together. And that is why, if you want to last long, marry a friend. I know. What is this people name? The relationship coach. Yeah, mind you. No, this is He's very good to of packaging and making money. I don't believe in all of those things. Why people that cannot keep their money for two years are coaching you online? And you are foolish enough to follow them. You have neglected Bible, neglected God's standard. And now anything a man right to put. And you know what? It's a very good business plan. Jump into it, there is no problem. You will succeed. You don't understand? Solve the problem. Just even if you don't have to solve it, just as you are solving it. And because it's a, it's a world of the Lord crisis, anything that looks like wisdom is swallowed there. And they know it's not working. They know.